Hello everyone, today we're going to look at Yasaku training spinning wheels. Okay, so in this problem we're given five wheel wheels, and then um, each of those wheels are basically going to be rotated to um, a specific um, degree, but then they don't become, um, or they always have an integer amount of degrees, so they could be like 30 or 40 degrees, but they couldn't be um, 1.5 or 23.5 on degrees. Okay, so each of those um, five wheels, they have a specific speed, which is going to be given um, by the first number of each line. And then each of those wheels have um, some wedges or just one wedge. So a wedge uh, is defined by um, a starting value and the extent. So um, the starting angle is basically um, the position it would be attached to a specific um, wheel, and then the extent would basically be the length of it. So for example, um, okay, so if the starting is zero and the extent is 180, then it means the degrees from zero to 80 inclusive meaning that it's basically attached to half of the um, of the wheel. And then, um, basically, what will happen is that um, all the wheels would start spinning, and then, but, and then basically by their speed, and then um, we're supposed to calculate the first time after time zero where all the wheels line up. Okay. So then, for example, we're given five wheels, as always, and we're given the first one has a speed of 30, the second one has a speed of 50, 60, 70, and 90. Okay. So for the first wheel, you have um, basically the start angle and the extent. So for the first wheel, you have one wedge with um, a starting angle of 0 and a, an extent of 120. For the second one, you have a starting angle of 150 and an extent of 90. Okay, so you have 60, 90, okay, and so on. Okay, so we want to print the first time um, so that a beam or a light beam can basically pass through all the wedges as well. Okay, whoops. Okay, so what we can do here is that we can basically make like um, an observation. Basically, um, we know that after each second, so basically, whoops, so each second, um, the wheels rotate, so then the, but then since there's basically only like, um, 360 degrees in, um, a whole rotation, then basically after 360 um, seconds, basically after, uh, or basically after 360 seconds, then um, all the like positions or all the uh, states of the wheels would be the same. So the states of the wheel would um would basically repeat and this is basically because let's just say um wheel one has the speed of um 30. okay so let's actually use 30 so this is speed so then if you actually multiply this by 360 you would get um let's just do some math here you would get 480. Okay, but then 480, you would basically divide that again by 360 because, or you actually would mod that by 360, which would get you zero, which is basically the original position. And you're going to actually mod this to get the, um, because it's actually in like a whole cycle. So if you go like, let's just say 361 degrees, you would actually be one degrees um, off. 
Okay, so then, so here's the basically the good observation. So then, once we know this, we can basically, um, we can basically, uh, like kind of brute force this. So basically, we can loop through times from one to three hundred and sixty. Okay, so then now we're going to loop through each wheel. So then we're going to loop through each wheel. Okay, so we're so um what we can do is that we can first calculate the um the direction this specific wheel is facing. So then since we know that at time zero all the wheels will be at um at direction zero degrees, so then our um direction will be equal to um time, which is the number of seconds we have times speed of the wheel. So for example, as I calculated here, um, you would multiply the speed by the time. And then again, as I said before, you would have to mod this by 360 since there's only 360 degrees. Okay, so now that you have this direction, you can basically find out each, um, each position of the wedges. So again, for each wedge, Or just each wedge. Okay, so for each wedge, now we know the basically the starting position of this is going to be the direction plus um, the start angle. And the start angle is basically given in the wedge, while the direction is given up here. Okay, and then we know our extent, which is basically the length of this specific wedge. So then our extent will be equal to, um, it would be equal to our start, or I mean, my bad. This would actually be end, be equal to start, plus extent. Okay, so now that we know our start and end, we can basically calculate the number of times these five wheels um, basically intersect. So for example, let's just say we have this start and end, and we also have this start and end, and um, we have this another start and end, and we also have, um, let's just say, the start and end, the start and end. Okay. So we have one, actually, this is actually a bad example. I'm just going to put it like this. Okay, so for the light beam to pass through, the light beam will actually pass through like somewhere over here. Because, um, <coughs> well, actually, never mind. Okay, so. What would happen is that you would have these, um, like, you have these, like, line segments because this is the start and this is the end. So then, if you want to get, if they actually, if they all have, like, a common intersecting area, what you can do, you know that this is the spot, right? So then, we can basically increment the count over here, so this would become... One, 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 one. And then again, you would increment this line by one. Again, this by one. Again, this by one. So then at this specific position, oops, okay. So basically at this specific position, the, you would call this, let's just say ones of this position, would be equal to the basically the number of um, number of wedges that have that point. Okay, so the number of wedges at position. So then what we would do is that after this, okay, let's actually go over here. We're going to basically um, increment ones i 
for i in range start n. Okay, so after we increment this, we're going to know the number of ones in this. So then, after this, what we're going to do is that, or basically after each wheel, we know the number of ones in this. So then, what we, what we would do, we would loop through, so each degree, so, no, so you know that degree would be from 0 to 360. So we're basically, what we're doing here is that we're just checking for each point. So actually, it's here. So we're checking for each point. If this point has exactly all five of those, um, of those wedges there. So then, basically, here, if one's degree is equal to the five, then we have an answer. So our answer would be the time, since we actually want the minimum time. So then, since what we're doing here is that we're checking if it's equal to 5, meaning that we have exactly um, all 5 of these wedges um, intersecting at the same point. Okay, so that's basically it. And let's get to coding. Alright, so this is spinning wheels. All right, let's include bits, or let's just do a studio. All right, so we're going to have in um, all those five wheels, so we can have our um, speed. So we're going to have five. So we're going to do for int i equals zero from two to five. We're going to read i. So we're going to read in another thing, which is the um, the number of wedges. Let's call this number of wedges. So then we would also scan f num um, of i. Okay. So then now we're going to loop through each um, each wedge, uh, which is declared by num of i, and then we're going to read in the wedge information. So we're going to have um, our uh, start angle. So we're going to have start angle. Okay, and we're also going to have the um, the extent. Okay, so for each of these, we're going to read in the start angle of i of j. And, oops, okay, and the extent, again, of i and j. Okay. So then after this, again, we're going to loop through each time from 0 to, or actually from 1 to 360. All right. So now we're going to loop through each of those five wheels. Again, so we have uh, from i. Okay, so remember we have to have our ones array. So then we can call this one 360. All right, so let's include uh, string to h. So we have our mem set. So every time we're going to reset this um, ones array. So for each of our wheel, we're going to basically loop through each of the um, wedges. And then, so we for each of our wedge, we know our starts will be equal, or before this, we actually need to calculate our direction. So our direction here would be equal to time times speed of i mod 360. All right, so now we know our start will be equal to Direction plus start angle of i of j mod 360. Well, let's actually just keep it like this, and we can actually mod it at after. 
So again, we can also keep this like this. We can mod it after. So we know that our um extent or I mean our end will be equal to our start plus extent. So we're going to loop through each k from start. Whoops. K start into start. So I'm wondering. Hmm. Oh, okay, I do not have a start over here. Speed of I. I guess this is correct. All right. So for k, so we want to loop through each of those um, each of the points on that specific line segment from start to end. Okay. So now we're going to increment basically the number of ones here. So it would be k mod um, 360, we'll just increment it here. Okay, so now over here, we're going to loop through each j from um, 0 to or all these degrees. We're going to check if once of j is equal to 5, then here's our answer. So we can just um, print. Uh, what we would print, we just print the time, so print time, I mean time, and then we can just return. Okay, so if we did not find anything, then we would just print, um, actually we'll just print none in lowercase. All right. So, okay, let's actually test this. So let's run this. Whoa, okay. So start angle IJ direction. I'm wondering what what is wrong. Alright, so it's line twenty-two. Oh, okay, so it looks like I did indent this wrong. Right. Well, okay, so from int 5 to int, okay, so, oh, okay, I see it. So this should actually be extent of ij, which is the extent of this specific wedge. Okay, so let me get the input. Right. Okay. Whoops, I did type something wrong. Okay. So it looks like 50. So I'm actually only reading the first line. And I'm pretty sure that scanf basically reads it line by line. So if I actually separate this, then this would actually not work. So let me just include or just switch to IO stream. All right, so we're going to do cn speed i num i. Here, this would be cn um, sting or start angle ij extent ij. All right, so I actually also have to include string h. This is just for memset actually. All right. Over here, we're going to do cn or basically just see out time and line. Let's actually use. Okay, so over here, we're going to do see out none. That's it. Okay, so let's remain. Get the input again. Okay. Mem set. I did include string that we share, so the mem set should actually also be included. Expected file name. Okay, so all good. So nine and let's so nine is correct. So let me actually um submit this. So this is uh we I mean spin dot n and we're writing to spin dot out. Alright. Let me actually just do cn dot tie this. Okay, so this or this statement is actually pretty good because it just um, unsyncs 
uh, CN and or basic it and syncs uh, the CN and C out functions with the um with the C style like input stuff and then um it just unties CN so then this would basically speed up the um the code a lot or just actually the input and output part so this is been all right so let's go submit it All right, so so this is um, spinning wheels. Okay. All right, spinning wheels main. Ooh, okay, so their output is zero. Our output is three. Okay, I kind of see why. Because what I'm missing here is that I'm actually not looping through the zero. So originally, um, if there was some kind of like intersection, intersection between all those, um, or basically at time zero, since I did not include that in my code, so then that would actually fail this test case. All right, so let's run it again. Okay, so that is right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Bye.